What an intro. What's up guys, my name's Ryan and this is my most recent build. It's a 2021 Dodge Promaster 159 wheelbase and this van's going to be for sale and I'll have some more information on that at the end of the video. So let's take a look inside. So when you enter here, you'll notice that I have a step so you don't have to carry a step stool around. That makes getting in and out a lot easier. So the whole van's really well insulated. It's all spray foam insulated on the walls and ceiling and the flooring has a one inch foam board insulation plus three quarter inch plywood plus the vinyl so the floor is very well insulated as well and over here we have the light switch for the front six leds i have the rear two on a separate switch near the bed and this second switch here is for the water pump and this switch here is for the gray water tank just flip this switch to drain it out the bottom and of course a bottle opener so you'll notice I have two max air fans these are the deluxe version with the smoked lid and they're both on separate remotes throughout the entire van everywhere within arm's reach I have USB and USB-C outlets and also AC outlets. I have some right here. Over here above the kitchen area, I've got another AC outlet, another DC USB outlet here. Over by the bed, we've got a DC outlet and an AC outlet. Also over the bed over here, I have an AC outlet if you wanna put a flat screen TV. So starting in the kitchen here, I have a two burner induction cooktop. On top of the cabinets, I have these natural stone countertops. Give it a really sleek look. And I was a little bit concerned about weight, but when you take into account the fact that it's almost all cut away for the stove and the sink, plus this is a false edge. You can see here, it's actually half the thickness that it shows here. If you look at the sink, that's the actual thickness of the countertop. So it's not really adding too much weight. It is adding a little bit of weight, but it's not an unreasonable amount. Same thing over here. This edge is actually a false edge. So the countertop's actually only half that thickness. The other nice thing about using these stone countertops when you're cooking here on the cooktop, you can place your hot pots and pans right onto the stone counters and it won't damage it. I've got the largest sink I've ever put in a van. This is a body sink and it's not one of the little bar ones it's a full-size kitchen sink that you'd have in your house and some extra counter space right here so for water I've got a 28 gallon fresh water tank and also a four gallon electric water heater so when you're ready to take a shower as long as the inverters on you can just flip this switch right here which will turn on the water heater and it takes about 25 30 minutes to heat up so I purposely put the switch there so that when you're driving, you can kind of reach back and hit that switch. You're about a half hour away from your destination so that when you get there, you'll have hot water for a shower or washing dishes or whatever. All of the cabinets are on these push locks so nothing swings open when you're driving. I've got a huge Dometic fridge here, and as you can see, even has a little freezer compartment. And that's all run off DC, so it's very efficient. Over on this side of the van, you'll see we have the separate Swedish toilet, and this is uh, brand new, of course. This separates the liquids and the solids. So the liquids go down this tube here. It goes under the van and into a separate tank, which is on a switch, as you can see right there. When you sit on this, it opens to a composting bag. And it's pretty easy to empty this toilet. You can just lift the whole unit up and it locks in place there so it holds itself up. And then you can just lift this part here and that will lock in place as well. And then you can just tie up the trash bag 
which is a composting trash bag and throw that away and replace it so you don't have to drive around with any kind of gross smells. So this is the shower and we've got the Nautilus self-cleaning shower door here. At first I was a little bit against having a shower inside the van. It's kind of a big commitment to space. Previously I kind of preferred the outdoor shower, but after testing this out and using it, it was pretty impressive actually. It was like showering at home. So I don't know, it's a bit of a trade-off. You lose a bit of interior space, but to have a shower inside, if you're somewhere where you can't shower out the back, somewhere cold, or just somewhere where you know you want some more privacy, uh, having an indoor shower is pretty good. This also has the push button start stop. I found this really nice looking low profile mixer. It's nice to have a low profile one in here so you don't kind of snag it since it's tight space. So the nice thing about having the shower on the other side here is it gives this wall that kind of separates the living space from the sleeping area. And it also enables you to have this whole control center here. So you can control basically everything from bed. The rear two LEDs are on this switch here. We have the thermostat for the diesel heater, the inverter switch, the remote for the rear fan, the battery monitors here, there's a USB and USB-C outlet right here. And it also has a cup holder, which folds down. So you have a cup holder when you're in bed. And there's also an AC outlet as well. While you're in bed, you can also reach down and turn on this blue LED light, which gives kind of a neat effect at night. So you can see I went with a fixed bed. I always prefer to go with a fixed bed. I know it's a bit of a trade-off. You know, you can't use this as a seating area like some people do. But for me, it's really important to have the garage space underneath. So when you have those convertible beds, yeah, you can sit in that area, but when I go on trips, I use that entire area under the bed to store bikes and surfboards and different things, camping equipment. So um, for me, it was important to have the fixed bed so I can have that permanent garage storage under there. And I specifically designed the height of this bed so I can store a full-size mountain bike under the bed just by taking the front wheel off. So like I said, with the step outside, I didn't want to have any stools in here, take up extra space. So I found this little flip up step thing here, which makes it easier to get up into the bed. I'll show you how that works right now. So to get into the bed, you just face this way, put your foot up on the step and you can easily hop into the bed. Same thing on the way down put your foot on the step and it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the bed. So you can see here with the cutouts, I was able to fit a full-size mattress without having to cut it down or alter it in any way. So you can easily sleep side to side. I'm six foot and I could sleep side to side without a problem. I don't have to go on a diagonal or anything. There's plenty of room. So you'll also notice when you walk in here, we've got the dual swivel seats. So with the two swivel seats and then the toilet actually acting as a third seat, this makes a pretty nice seating area here and everybody gets a view out the window. So you may be wondering, where's the table? Let me show you. Not only is this a built-in cutting board, but it also doubles as the tabletop, which locks right into the Lagoon table mount. So you just pop the Lagoon table mount on here and this spins like this and grab the tabletop and this just pops in here. So now you can see we've got this nice tabletop and this lowers and swivels around to wherever you need it. And you could also do a, a larger tabletop as well, of course, 
but I like the idea of having this fit right into the sink area and not having to carry an additional table around and store it somewhere. But this works out well working on a laptop or whatever. So I installed this window on the sliding door and it does open as well. This pops out and also has a screen built in. And I also have a magnetic insulated window covering for it. This will be included in the sale. And this just pops on here for when you need some privacy. One of the hardest areas to finish are the areas above the rear door and above the sliding door. That's the first place I always look when I look at somebody's van to kind of judge if they did a good job or not. And I actually have a video on how I built this shelf if you're interested. So again, here's the uh, shelf over the slider. Just finishes it off nicely. So I've installed these blackout curtains, which are insulated on this sliding track. And at night, these can completely black out any light coming in from the van. So if you need to be stealth, or if it's a really hot day, I like to keep these closed too because the, all the heat comes from the front of the cabin. And with these closed, it stays nice and cool in here. And of course, above here, we've got a ton of storage for all different kinds of things. Moving on to the garage here, you can see I've got the under bed light here, which helps a lot at night. And I've got a fork mounted bike rack here. The bed is at the perfect height to fit the mountain bike in there or a road bike that's set at the perfect distance to fit both the mountain bike and the road bike. When you close the door, there's just enough space. And these are removable surfboard racks. You can also use these to help keep in place whatever you're storing back here. And you can also add more of them too, just by drilling a small hole. This is the tank for the diesel heater. It's a seven liter tank. And the actual diesel heater is back here, boxed in. And I ran the pump under the van so it'd be a little more quiet at night when you're sleeping. For power, I have 400 watts of solar panels on the roof and 300 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries here. These are my favorite batteries. I think they're the best you can get. And here's all the electrical equipment. I've got the 50 amp DC to DC Renergy charge controller. And this will also allow for alternator charging. So you can charge the van off the solar panels, which is usually more than enough. But if it's raining or it's a cloudy day, then also when you turn the engine on, you get the power from the alternator as well. I've got a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And then this is my DC sub panel and fuses. So on the right here, I've got a 28 gallon fresh water tank, like I mentioned earlier. Over here, you can see the four gallon electric water heater. All the plumbing in the van is PEX, as you can see here. Here's your fill for the water tank. You can just fill that with a hose or a funnel and a jerry can. Over here, I have a quick connect for a hose connection. This goes in here. And this is hot and cold, actually. Like I mentioned earlier, I kind of prefer outdoor showers. So, in addition to the indoor shower, I also made a connection for the shower head here so that this will plug into the same quick connect right here. So now you also have a heated outdoor shower in addition to the one inside. And in the back here, I also have this Prime Design aluminum ladder. Helps you get up to the roof if you need to clean the panels. Here in the front, you'll notice I have this really powerful light bar and that's attached to a little push bar bracket and the two floodlights here. These make a huge difference at night on dark roads. I'll show you guys a little clip of that, what that looks like. Regular headlights, brights, and the light bar. And 
and this is the regular stock headlights and now for the light bar <laughs> it's just insane it's like daylight so like I said this van is for sale so what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to the actual listing for the van that way if I adjust the price at all you'll have the most up-to-date info if you're interested in the van you can also email me right here at this email address and also if you're interested in any of the products I used here I'll have links for most of those in the description down below and if I missed anything just shoot me a comment I usually try to reply to all the comments so if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel I actually have a whole video series showing the whole build of this van from start to finish from a blank cargo van to what you see right now Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell. I've been putting out videos every week or two. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but this van is brand new. It only has 3,000 miles on it. And as soon as this one sells, I'm going to be starting another van. And I have a lot of cool ideas for that already. So I look forward to sharing that with you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time.